Hey guys, World Eater here. Today we'll be going over the basics of runes and enchants. Let's check it out. We're going to first go over runes and then we're going to follow it with enchants afterwards. I'll make sure to leave timestamps in the description to make it easier for you to find the info that you are looking for. So I want to start off by answering this noob's question. What do runes do? Well, Runes provide a boost to the player when activated in their rune table. There are currently five different types of runes in total, that being minor, major, meta, relic, and artifact. So to start off, minor runes provide the player with bonuses. Those bonuses can be either experience, capture rate, gold find, or item find. All of them have their benefits. I highly recommend having a pair of each just to help you focus on whatever it is whenever you need it. Going on to the major runes, major runes improve a player's offensive and defensive modifiers. There are currently 12 different major runes. I'll list them here on screen for you to see. I always recommend having the same bonus on all four major rune slots as well to help you focus on a specific stat, especially for you tanky players out there that really need to focus on that block, evade, damage reduction, and so on. Meta runes provide the player with effects based on a condition. So there are currently eight different meta runes, I believe. I'll go ahead and list them here on screen. But... The way it works is you either have to get attacked, it'll be on your first attack, um, it'll be whether you defeat them, you know, there's going to be a condition for you to have in order to take advantage of these bonuses. Relic runes provide the player with an effect similar to pets. There are currently four different relic runes that I will list here on screen. So it's not as strong as a pet, but as you can see here, they are very, very similar to pets. So just for example, the mole rune. X percent chance when you hit an enemy to reduce their current health by 10%. It has that when you hit condition that a pet has. So just keep that in mind. Very, very similar to pets. Now if we go to the artifact rune, it provides the player with effects similar to pets and bone augments. There are currently four different artifact runes that I will list here on screen. So just to go over one of them, the Nonic Artifact Rune. While at full health, gain X% percent damage reduction. Very, very similar to the bone augments used in Familiars. And just a bit of info for you to note, runes are permanently inserted into a slot. So that means that they cannot be moved to another slot once placed. Once you have that rune in that slot, you cannot remove it unless you completely destroy it by melting it. The player may have multiple runes in the same slot of the rune table, but only one rune may be active at any time in each slot. Runes may be obtained through crafting or as prizes in events such as PvP and trials. Other than that, you have to craft them. Runes are crafted using either rune fragments, ancient fragments, or elemental fragments. Gold is also needed for crafting these recipes. Crafting will provide a random rune of the type being created for all runes from common all the way to legendary rarity. Now, mythic runes may be hard crafted, but for a premium cost. Mythic runes will need two more ingredients to add to those list of ingredients that I listed previously, and that's going to be mytineral and gloomy marbles. Mytineral can be farmed in trials or gauntlet in any difficulty. Honestly, you can farm it from the first difficulty all the way to the highest you can go and you have a chance of dropping my tineral. gloomy marbles on the other hand can only be obtained by scrapping legendary runes so you would have to craft a legendary rune or win one through an event whether it's pvp or trials and scrap it just to get the so keep that in mind it could be quite a grind to get these mythic runes now which runes should you prioritize Minor runes, in my opinion, are probably the most important since there's very few of them and each one of them can benefit the player just indefinitely. So I would definitely say go for minor runes first. Um, it will definitely help with your progression, whether it's more gold, XP, cap rate, or item find. You just cannot go wrong with them. Now, after that, I would definitely go into major runes. Um, they're very, very viable, especially because they can easily 
boost your player stats. So I highly recommend going for your major runes after. Having a full set of any rune combination can feel like a night and day difference, to be honest. So definitely right after minor, hit those major runes. Following that, I would go into the meta rune. And after the meta, I would go into either the relic or artifact, just depending on what your build is needing. Now, let's move on to enchants. I could have made these two separate videos, but I decided to combine it all so all the info is in one place. I also feel runes and enchants go hand in hand together, so it felt right putting them in the same video. Now, you may or may not be asking, what do enchants do anyways? Enchants are items that provide a small stat boost and bonuses when equipped. Higher rarity enchants actually do have higher base stats. You also need to unlock enchant slots. You start off with just one free enchant slot, then the second one is unlocked at level 25. After that, you will need to hit level 50 for the third one, and every 50 levels after that, you unlock more until you have six total slots. So, where or how do you get more enchants? Enchants can be dropped by any enemy in zones, raids, trials and gauntlet, world boss, and some treasure chests. You can even purchase them in the shop very, very occasionally, but that's a lot more rare than, you know, finding them anywhere else. You can also craft mythic enchants either by rolling them or hard crafting them. Now that we're on the topic of mythic enchants, just note that there are four materials needed to craft these, and that's going to be gold, epic material, spell soil, and mud. Spell soil can only be obtained by scrapping other legendary enchants that you find in one of the places I listed before. Mud can also be found in dungeon quests that have epic familiars in them. So pretty much any zone, any difficulty, as long as it's going to be a D1, a D2, a D3, or a D4. How do you change your enchants? Well, unlike runes, you can actually move your enchants from one area to another. So that's pretty cool. It doesn't really give you any use, but it is something that you can do. So don't freak out if you put an enchant in a certain spot thinking, oh my God, I'm going to melt this because you're not. It's not the same thing as runes. So that's a huge W there. Just a huge tip to throw at you as well. Never roll any enchants, please. Like, Never. It's always a waste of materials. You always want to scrap them and just farm for another one. It may seem like it might take forever, but trust me, if you keep rolling your enchants, you're never going to have gold or any materials. So it can be very costly, very, very fast. So saving materials early on can definitely help you craft a very strong enchants in the future. So you got all the stuff you need to craft mythic enchants and you want to know which ones to make. I would always recommend a player base their enchants around their runes. Both runes and enchants should go based around their player's accessory or a bonus that the player is going for depending on their role, whether they're DPS, tank, healer, or any other role. But we will leave accessories and roles to another video. Thank you so much for watching. This is World Eater. Have a great one, guys. Peace.